Ethereum and its concepts. Ethereum. Simply put, while Bitcoin is defined as digital money, Ethereum is a decentralized platform that runs the smart contracts exactly the way they are programmed without any downtime, fraud, and third-party interference, and also has its own cryptocurrency called Ether. Ethereum aims to enable innovations in three key areas. Currency assurance through Ether, which serves as an innate currency for the Ethereum blockchain. Decentralized autonomous organization. Smart contracts. Features of Ethereum. The first feature of Ethereum is that it is secure because it is almost impossible to tamper with the transactions in the block or to add any fraudulent blocks in the network. The second feature of Ethereum is its community following. Ethereum has attracted a lot of attention from people all over the world. The third feature of Ethereum is its corporate friendly structure. The platform is being leveraged by a number of corporates to test and build various applications. The fourth feature that we will take a look at is the possibility of creating new assets on Ethereum blockchain that can be used as currency, a representation of an asset, a virtual share, a proof of membership, or anything at all. The next feature is the ability of Ethereum to process the transactions fast. While Bitcoin requires a block time of 10 minutes, in Ethereum, it's only a few seconds. The last feature that we will discuss is the fact that Ethereum is uncensored. Ethereum's open source network allows complete transparency to view every transaction. All right, that's all about the features of Ethereum. Let me tell you about an important concept in Ethereum called gas. Gas in Ethereum. Gas is the fundamental block of Ethereum ecosystem that is paid for every operation performed on the Ethereum blockchain. It is the crypto fuel for Ethereum. It can be considered a transaction fee, which has to be paid when one party sends ethers to another party. Even when a person deploys a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, a transaction fee needs to be paid for that as well. This payment has to be made regardless of whether the transaction succeeds or fails. Gas price is expressed in ether and the miner decides whether to refuse the transaction process or not based on the expected gas price. One can see their transaction fee in ETH or USD when searching for the transaction on etherscan.io. When somebody refers to gas, they are either talking about gas price or gas limit. The total cost of a transaction is the product of gas limit and gas price. The gas limit is defined as a limit since it's the maximum amount of units of gas one is willing to spend on a single transaction. This avoids situations where there is an error somewhere in the contract and you end up spending a very high amount of gas. However, the units of gas required for a transaction are defined by the amount of code executed on the blockchain. Lowering the gas limit below the amount required will not help much. If enough gas to cover the computational resources of the network is not supplied with the transaction, the transaction will fail due to an out of gas error. So gas is a commodity which is essentially a cost of using the system. Like bitcoins, Ethereum also has its currency, which is called Ether. Ether. It is an incentive that the client of the platform pays to execute requested operations. It ensures that the developers write error-free codes because unnecessary codes will increase the cost. Ethereum is a blockchain-based platform, and Ether is the cryptocurrency that fuels the platform. It is commonly denoted as ETH. Let's have a look at the differences between Bitcoin and Ether. Bitcoin versus Ether. The first difference 
is in the hashtag algorithm used by these cryptocurrencies. While Bitcoin uses SHA-256 to encrypt blocks of blockchain, Ethereum uses Ethash to encrypt blocks. Technically, both are one-way cryptographic hash functions. The second difference is in the use of Bitcoin and Ether. As we have discussed earlier, Bitcoin is only used for financial transactions like purchase and sale of goods and services. However, Ethereum being a Turing complete platform also supports smart contracts and decentralized applications. The third difference is in the price of the two cryptocurrencies. Currently, the price of BTC is approximately 3,500 US dollars, while that of ETH is approximately 100 US dollars. The market cap of BTC is almost six times greater than that of BTC, even though ETH has a higher circulating supply. The fourth difference is in the vision behind creation of these two cryptocurrencies. BTC is a currency created to compete against the gold and flat currencies by acting as an alternative. However, ETH is created as a token to facilitate smart contract deployment and operations. Lastly, the transaction speed of BTC is much slower than ETH. While BTC's transaction speed is measured in minutes, ETH is just a few seconds. Like Bitcoins, Ethers are also stored in cryptocurrency wallets. Let's understand what are wallets in Ethereum. Ethereum Virtual Machine Ethereum Wallets a wallet is the place to securely store Ethers and other cryptocurrencies. Basically, a wallet stores the means of accessing your currency using the private key. Now that I have told you about the Ethereum and its currency, it will only be fair that I explain EVM now. EVM Ethereum Virtual Machine, abbreviated as EVM, is an engine which executes translation code. Smart contracts are compiled into bytecode, which an EVM can read and execute. The Ethereum virtual machine can be regarded as a quasi-Turing complete machine. It possesses its own programming language known as the EVM bytecode. Once the code is written in higher level programming languages, the code can be compiled to an EVM bytecode. The Ethereum virtual machine uses a set of instructions called opcodes to execute specific tasks. Thus, if a user triggers a transaction of 5 ETH using his desktop wallet, the wallet sends the message to the EVM, which connects with the wallet address on the Ethereum network to process the transaction and send it to the receiver. Smart contracts are written in Ethereum-specific programming languages. Let's learn more about these languages. Ethereum Languages Every contract written for Ethereum is compiled into the EVM bytecode and deployed to Ethereum blockchain for execution. Ethereum uses the following languages. The first language is Solidity. Solidity is an object-oriented, high-level language used for implementation of smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. Solidity was influenced by Python, C++, and JavaScript. It is designed to target the EVM. The second language is a low-level Lisp-like language. Abbreviated as Triple L, it is one of the original Ethereum smart contract programming languages and is similar to assembly. It is meant to be a very simple and minimalistic language, essentially serving as a tiny wrapper over coding in EVM directly. The third language is Viper, which is a contract-oriented programming language influenced by Python. The fourth language is Serpent, which is an assembly language that compiles to EVM code that is extended with various high-level features. The next language is Mouton. Mouton is similar to C-like language and supports a dynamic, 
full higher level language. It compiles to native Ethereum assembler. However, Mouton is now deprecated. The last language is Julia. It is an intermediate language that can compile to various different backends like EVM 1.0, EVM 1.5, and EWASM. Let me now tell you about the accounts handled by Ethereum. Types of Ethereum accounts. Externally owned accounts. EOA is an account controlled by a private key that has the ability to send ethers and messages from it. Following are some of the properties of an externally owned account. Firstly, it has an ether balance. Secondly, it can send transactions. Thirdly, it is controlled by private keys. And fourthly, it has no associated code. Smart contract. Smart contract is a code running on top of the blockchain containing a set of rules for the nodes to agree upon so that they can interact with each other. As an account, it has the following properties. Firstly, it has an ether balance. Secondly, it has an associated code. Thirdly, a code execution is triggered by transactions or messages received from other contracts. And fourthly, when executed, it performs operations of arbitrary complexity. Some of the advantages of smart contracts are as follows. First, smart contract is the simplest way of implementing decentralization. Second, it provides a high degree of security. Third, it eliminates the need for a third party. Fourth, it provides automatic agreement enforcement. Fifth, it turns legal obligations into an automated processes. And lastly, it lowers the transaction cost. Characteristics of smart contracts. Smart contracts are self-verifying and self-executing. They operate autonomously to execute the terms of the contract and verify the transactions without the need of a third party intervention. The elimination of third parties reduces the cost of operations and further makes the contracts tamper resistant process of smart contracts. In this slide, we will understand how the smart contract works. First, an optional contract between the parties is written as a code into the blockchain. The individuals involved are anonymous, but the contact is made through a public ledger. Then a trigger event like an expiration date or a strike price is hit and the contract executes itself according to the coded terms. Next, regulators can use the blockchain to understand the activities in the market while maintaining the privacy of an individual's position. Let me show you the implementation of smart contract in a simple use case. Smart contract example. Here we have an example showing the purchase and sale of a house. Thus, once a buyer is matched with a seller, all assets are sent into the contract. The contract then distributes the assets based on certain predetermined conditions agreed between both parties and coded into the smart contract. Thus, the settlement is automated and the ownership becomes undisputed due to the transparency of blockchain. EOA versus smart contract. In this slide, we will understand the difference between an EOA and a smart contract based on four critical properties. Nonce. In an externally owned account, nonce represents the number of transactions sent from the account's address. However, in a contract account, the nonce is the number of contracts created by the account. The next property is balance. This number shows the amount of way owned by the address, whether the EOA or the contract account. Each ether is divided into 1E plus 18 WEI. The next property is code hash. It is the hash of the Ethereum virtual machine code of an account. This is the code that gets executed if this address receives a message call. It is immutable and thus it cannot be changed once the construction is done. For externally owned accounts, the code hash field is the hash of the empty string. 
For contract accounts, this is the code that gets hashed and is stored as the code hash. The last property is storage root. It is a 256-bit hash of the root node of a Merkle tree that encodes the storage contents of the account encoded into the tree as a mapping from the KeyCAC 256-bit hash of the 256-bit integer keys to the RLP encoded 256-bit integer values. This tree encodes the hash of the storage contents of this account and is empty by default. That was all about the Ethereum concepts and accounts. Let's understand the process of mining now. Ethereum mining. Ethereum mining. Ethereum makes use of proof of work mechanism to ensure security. The algorithm used in Ethereum is called ETHash. Each time an Ethereum transaction is made, a miner is responsible for ensuring the authenticity of information and updating the blockchain with the transaction. Let's consider an example where Bob wants to send one ETH to Alice. Now we will take a look at the step-by-step -step process that is followed in order to confirm this transaction through mining. First, Bob attempts to send Alice one ETH. Once Bob's transaction is initiated, it is combined with other transactions that have occurred in the last block. The miners will then validate the block with a new set of instructions. Once validated, the miner creates a new block and is rewarded for it. Thus, Alice receives one ETH after the transaction is validated. Ethereum mining. The term transaction is used in Ethereum to refer to the signed data package that contains a message to be sent from an EOA to another account on the blockchain. Ethereum blocks contain two things, a transaction list and a recent state of the ledger that comprises these transactions. In the example shown on the screen, we can see a transaction where one wallet sends 20 ETH to another wallet. The diagram shows the previous state and the next state for the transaction. State storage. The states are assembled into a state tree that is linked to the account and the block. The Ethereum includes state roots that store the root hash of the hash tree, which represents the system state when the block was created. Now we will take a look at the step-by-step -step process to see how Ethereum stores transactions. First, a hash is generated for each transaction. Then pairs are selected and a hash is generated for each pair. This way, the last remaining hash becomes the root. The block header as seen in the image on the screen contains the previous block hash and three Merkle trees. These trees are to maintain the state, to maintain the transactions, and to maintain the receipts. Also, each block always refers to its previous block's hash. Ethereum Ecosystem Types of Ethereum Tools The Ethereum Ecosystem consists of eight major tools. They are Geth, Ganache, Parity, Metamask, Mist Wallet, Swarm, IPFS, Whisper. Now, Let's move forward and take a look at each of these in detail. Geth. Geth is a multi-purpose command line tool that runs an Ethereum node implemented in Go. It is the official Golang implementation of the Ethereum protocol and is commonly used to interact with the Ethereum network. Though there are several ways to download Geth, the fastest one is to get it from the ethereum.org website. Next, we have Ganache CLI. Ganache CLI. Ganache CLI is a customizable and fast emulator for blockchain, which permits making calls to blockchain without the need for running an actual Ethereum node. Following are some of the properties of Ganache. Firstly, transactions are mined instantly. Secondly, no transaction cost. Thirdly, 
Accounts can be recycled, reset, and instantiated with a fixed number of ether without the need for faucets or mining. Fourthly, gas price and mining speed can be modified. Fifthly, a convenient GUI gives you an overview of your test chain events. Parity. Parity is the fastest, lightest, and most secure Ethereum client that provides the core infrastructure essentials for quick and reliable services. Parity is written in Rust language. It offers better reliability, code clarity, and performance. It is an Ethereum client that is integrated directly into your web browser. Apart from allowing the users to access the functions of basic Ether and token wallet, it also serves as an Ethereum GUI browser. It provides access to a diverse range of Ethereum features, including dApps. MetaMask. MetaMask turns Google Chrome into a browser that allows the users to send and receive transactions and also fetch data from the blockchain. It is a browser-based wallet which can be added as a plugin to your Chrome browser. It permits you to run Ethereum dApps directly from your browser without the need for running a full Ethereum node. MetaMask Accounts Practically, it is unrealistic for everyone in the world to run a node to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. To overcome this, MetaMask hosts a number of nodes so you don't have to. A user simply needs to install MetaMask and can automatically get connected to the nodes. Thus, you can use the Ethereum blockchain seamlessly. Let's talk Mist, which is another important tool of the blockchain ecosystem. Mist Wallet. Mist Wallet is the end user interface for Ethereum that is developed for browsing and using dApps. Mist is an official Ethereum wallet. It was developed and distributed by the team which is responsible for the management of Ethereum ecosystem. It is usually used by developers who want to create, deploy, and use smart contracts. It is a full node wallet, which means you'll have to download the entire Ethereum blockchain onto your computer. Some of the applications of Mist Wallet is as follows. First, sending and receiving transactions. Second, storing Ether. Third, creating multi-signature wallets. And fourth, deploying smart contracts. Swarm. Swarm is a platform which supports distributed storage and provides content distribution services. It acts as a native base layer service of the Ethereum Web3 stack. It provides sufficient decentralization and redundant storage of Ethereum records to distribute blockchain data as well as dApp codes. It leverages the underlying Ethereum infrastructure through the use of contracts and ethers to encourage cooperation among nodes. The files are split into pieces and are stored in the nodes of the network. An accounting protocol is used by peers to keep track of these chunks delivered and received and resulting micropayments associated with it. IPFS IPFS is a decentralized storage system that is not related directly to Ethereum, but can be integrated with it. IPFS stores data by use of a distributed hash table or DHT. Once we know the hash, we request the peer network who has a copy of the content located at the corresponding hash and then we download the content from the node who has the desired data which we need. The data transfer between the nodes in the network uses a mechanism which is similar to the one used in BitTorrent. It also provides a versioned file system capable of storing files and tracking versions over time. Thus, it defines how files move across a network, making it a distributed file system. By combining all of these properties, IPFS is enabling a new permanent web and augmenting the way we use existing internet protocols like HTTP. Whisper. 
Whisper is an identity-based communication protocol for dApps to interact with each other. dApps that need to publish small amounts of information to each other and have the publication last some substantial amount of time prefer using Whisper. For instance, a dApp running a currency exchange may use Whisper to record an offer to buy a currency at a pre-agreed price on the exchange platform. Some of the drawbacks of Whisper are as follows. It has low-level API, which is only exposed to dApps and never to users. Second, it has low bandwidth and is not designed for large data transfers. Third, it has uncertain latency. And lastly, it has no reliable methods for tracing packets. Ethereum frameworks. We'll look at two types of Ethereum frameworks. Web3.js. Web3.js is a set of libraries which permit one to interact with a remote or local Ethereum node. It can be done with the use of IPC or an HTTP connection. The key connection between Ethereum network and DAP that allows you to compile, deploy, and interact with smart contracts is called Web3.js. It gives us a way to build a website or client that can talk to the Ethereum blockchain. Let's take an example of traditional development. When you develop a website, it talks to APIs using JSON or jQuery to make AJAX calls. A website talks to blockchain using Web3 using JSON.RPC, which is similar to making a remote procedure call. Ethereum comprises of a large number of nodes which talk to each other. We use JSON RPC to make a request to a particular node, which is like an API call. Thus, if we want to talk to a smart contract or read an account, we do it through Web3. ETH.js. It is a highly optimized, lightweight JS utility for Ethereum based on Web.js. In this, all the unnecessary characters are removed from the source code and the code is reduced to 160 kilobytes. Ethereum Development Environment. The three commonly used Ethereum development environments include Remix IDE, Truffle, and Embark. Let's understand these environments in a little more detail. Remix IDE. Remix IDE is a browser-based compiler and IDE that enables users to debug transactions and build Ethereum contracts with Solidity language. You can simply log on to the web-based editor, write the code, and compile the same to create the bytecode in order to test your code. The next slide shows how Remix looks. Another popular environment is Truffle. Truffle. Truffle is a development environment testing framework and asset pipeline for blockchains using the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM. It helps users in developing smart contracts, publish the contracts, and test them. Then we have Embark. Embark. Embark is an environment that allows you to easily develop and deploy decentralized applications. It performs the following functions. First, automatic deployment of contracts. Second, keeping track of deployed contracts. Third, managing the complex systems of interdependent contracts. Fourth, performing test-driven deployment with contracts using JavaScript. Fifth, managing different chains like testnet, private net, and live net. And lastly, redeploy the contracts if any changes are done. Let's talk about Ethereum networks. Ethereum network. The basis for decentralized consensus is the peer-to-peer -peer network of participating nodes which maintain and secure the blockchain. A node is defined as a device or a program that can communicate with the Ethereum blockchain network. They are also referred to as clients. They provide wallet functionality and allow users to perform transactions on the blockchain. Thus, a node serves as a machine running as an Ethereum client. 
It is used to store the data and transfer money. It is formed by combining one or more nodes, and each node contains a copy of the blockchain. Types of network. There are three main types of networks, the testnet, the main net, and the private network. Ethereum dApps and DAOs. DApp. Decentralized application is an application that is used on networks with trustless protocols to avoid a single point of failure. They run on a peer-to-peer -peer computer network. All the activity which takes place on an Ethereum decentralized application is cryptographically secured on the blockchain. DApps are open source, which means that everyone can verify the contents of the software. Some properties of DApps are as follows. It uses Ethereum as a development platform. It uses cryptographically encoded blocks. It is not governed by a central server and there is no master copy of DApp. Let's talk about the advantages of DApps now. Advantages of DApp. Ethereum DApps have the following advantages. Improved stability due to a distributed network. Higher reliability. Automatic credentials assigned through smart contracts. No downtime. No third-party intervention. And high security. Example of dApps. Some of the known examples of dApps include WeFund, Storage, KYC Chain, and 4G Capital. These companies have developed different applications using blockchain. Next, we have the DAOs. DAO. DAOs are organizations designed to hold assets and use the voting system to distribute them. They exist entirely on blockchain and are governed by the consensus protocols. They show the potential of blockchain to revolutionize human social institutions called DAOs. It is an organization run by rules agreed through a consensus process among its members and written in a set of contracts run via a blockchain. It is an open source software capable of modification by its members. Process of a DAO. Now, let's take an example and see how this works. Let's consider that a country is holding elections and wants to prevent fraud in the voting system. A DAO is created to keep transparency in the voting. This is ensured by embedding predefined conditions in the code. People eligible to vote are assigned voting tokens and the voting starts. Every vote is processed on the Ethereum blockchain and it ensures transparency by allowing everything to run in a decentralized way. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.